Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be passing over to Matt from Collaboration Coach who's going to dive into Project Mocha or Outlook Spaces which was launched earlier this year and he's going to go into a bit more detail about how it works. This is the sort of Mila Note competitor so Matt's going to show us all around. Before we begin make sure to subscribe to Matt. He has a fantastic channel called Collaboration Coach which covers Microsoft and he's been on the channel a couple of times before. It's great to have a back and I'll pass over to Matt. Hello, it's Matt from Collaboration Coach and thank you for having me back on Keep Productive. This time I'm going to talk about a new app for Office 365 called Project Mocha that's also known as Outlook Spaces. Microsoft had this in preview and so I thought now would be a good time for me to walk you through it and see what you think. Project Mocha is a module in Outlook on the web. It's in preview, so there's no support from Microsoft. It's for personal productivity, and you open it from your Outlook on the web mailbox, and it runs in the browser, and it isn't available for the full Outlook client. Currently, this is turned on by changing a mailbox policy using PowerShell, so an administrator has to do it, and I'll link to how that's done in the description below. To open the app, I'll go to my mailbox from the app launcher in Office 365, and if Project Mocker is turned on by script already, you can choose the ellipsis at the bottom of your mailbox and there'll be a link to it. When you open up that, you land on the start page that shows you a list of templates and your spaces. And all of these spaces are essentially collections of tasks and information. You can create a space based on a template or start from scratch with the new space button. I start my new space with a blank canvas and the canvas is very similar to whiteboard in that you're free to move around the space and add things to it wherever you like. You'll see on the left hand side I have a toolbar and I can add items to the canvas by choosing them. I can drag the canvas around and move any of the items that are already in it and on the right hand side I have a map of the canvas showing me whereabouts I am on it and I have some zoom controls and there's also keyboard shortcuts for that too. I can move far away from the original places I can and then I can press the reset button to just go straight back to it. If you like this video so far, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, Collaboration Coach. We post on Microsoft apps and services twice a week. I can switch between my spaces by going to the top of the toolbar and pressing the button to show me the list of all my spaces and the home button will take me to the start page. As we've seen, you can add items on their own, like this note, or you can have containers called buckets and add items to the buckets. There are a number of items you can choose from, most of which are self-explanatory, and many of them integrate with other areas of Office 365. For example, it has access to the file storage system in OneDrive and in your group connected SharePoint sites. I could add a bucket called files, then I could add files to the bucket. When I add a file, it asks me to pull one from OneDrive, or I can search through my groups, which essentially means my group connected SharePoint sites. The space also has integration with the Microsoft To Do app. When I add a task from the toolbar, it will automatically add the task to a new list in my To Do app. The space also integrates with your email. If you choose the search button, it will take you to the activity bar and you'll see the messages here are pulled from your mailbox and you can just drag them onto the canvas or drop them into a bucket. It has a tab for messages and events and also a search box where you can look for them by keyword. And this is where the space settings are useful. You can choose which people are associated with the space and it suggests email from them that you might want to add to the canvas. So you just type their name and it will pull them from your organization's directory. You can also add keywords that Mocha can look for in your mailbox as well. You can also add email from your inbox to Mocha. If I switch to Outlook on the web, I can open up an email, choose the ellipsis here, and then choose add to project Mocha. It will give me a list of my spaces and I can choose one and it will add the email to the space. It will show up in the captured list and I can drag them onto the canvas. 
The space also links to your sticky notes. I can drag a note from the toolbar onto the canvas and that note will sync with my sticky notes app. Finally, let's have a look at the templates. On the Mocha homepage, we've got a list of five pre-created templates. And if I choose the weekly plan, you can see that there's a bucket added for each day. And if I choose the project plan template, it adds a bucket for to do, progress and done. So it's kind of like a Kanban board. So templates are a really useful way of speeding up the process of getting started with Mocha. So there is your first look at Project Mocha. And if you like the video, then please check out our YouTube channel, Collaboration Coach, and I'll see you next time.